Here I'm going to show you how to do a coronavirus analysis within Excel, specifically how to pull in the COVID-19 infection numbers, how many deaths, as well as how many recoveries throughout the world. In light of recent events, I think this is a pretty good thing to cover. And the benefit of getting this data into Excel is that once we have it there, we can slice it, dice it, and display it however we would like. So we're going to start off going to the website right up here. It's for the Johns Hopkins University. And once you go there, let's zoom out now. You can see the page. This is what it's going to look like. On your screen, it'll look a little bit bigger. I had to kind of shrink it for the recording. And once you get here, go to view the COVID-19 interactive map. Now, what I'm going to do here first is show you the map, then show you where you can get the data, then show you how to pull it into Excel, and a few examples of how to slice and dice it. So we can see the map. And once again, it'll look a little better when your screen's larger than this video resolution. So the map is quite a nice little map that is updated daily with a bunch of different data sources that I'll show you how to find out more about in a moment. And you can click the circles and get a little bit more information. It's very, very helpful, very useful. And if we go down here, you can see active cases as well. And this chart's kind of messed up now because everything's tiny, but it's a pretty helpful little interface. So if you just want a nice little interface, you don't even need Excel, you can do it, you can use this. But we want to get the data that is used to build this model so we can build our own models. So what you want to do for that, and if you are on a mobile device, by the way, one little tip, go up here to the little hamburger dude, and you can choose the mobile version, and it'll look better on your phone. So now let's go to get the data for this. Go to the COVID-19 map FAQ. What we want is this little bit right here. All data collected and displayed are made freely available through a GitHub repository. So a GitHub repository is where you can publish data open source for the whole world to see and use. And that's what we want. Also, one little interesting note, you can use this code here to embed the dashboard in your website if you want. So we want to go to the GitHub repository. And now, if you haven't seen this before, it's going to look a little bit crazy. But basically, GitHub is used to disseminate information in an open source manner. So scroll down a little bit to here, and you'll have an explanation of all the data. You can see the data sources, so you can go to them directly and get more information if you'd like, since this is only updated once per day. And here we have the actual files, but before I show you that, I want to show you one of the benefits of this, the beautiful thing, since it's open source, is they have an issues section. So nothing is going to be perfect here, but we want to make it as perfect as possible. So once you're looking at the data, if you see an issue, you can go here, click New Issue, log in, and tell them, hey, you made an error, you might want to fix it. So that's the benefit of this. They're not just saying, hey, these are the numbers, take it or leave it. They're saying, hey, these are the numbers. If you want to help improve them, okay, cool. So let's go back to the code. And it's the code section that's going to have the data that we want. We want to go here to the CSSE COVID-19 data. And then you have two options, the time series and the daily reports. Daily reports are pretty cool. It's just updated daily. So if we go to yesterday, we can see the data. So here you have the province or state, country, region, when it was last updated, the confirmed cases, deaths recovered, and a longitude and a latitude. Longitude and latitude are not going to be accurate for the individual cases, just kind of a general location. And this is how the data is actually presented, and we want to go ahead and get it into Excel. And this data over here is quite a nice set of data, actually. So you have three separate files, confirmed, deaths, and recovered. And what it does is within one file, it has every day since they started tracking this. So this is what we are actually going to pull into Excel. But in order to get this dude into Excel, we have to go back. So let's go to click code again. We go back to this section and you want to go to clone or download. Click download zip. It's going to download a zip file for you. Make sure you save the file. Hit OK. 
I have already done that. It's quite a large file, 42.8 megabytes. And then we can go and open it on our computer. So once you have it, just right click. And towards the top, you'll see something that says extract all. Click that. And we're just going to go ahead and extract these files. All right, so now we have the data opened up. Let's go and find it. It's the same structure as it is on the website. So COVID-19 data, and we have the daily reports, but we want to check out time series. Now it's gonna look like it's in an Excel format right now. It's just CSV format, but we can open it up and it'll open up in Excel. And then you can kind of browse through it. There we go. But this is just a CSV file. So we're not going to be doing any work within this file itself. What we want to do is import the CSV file into another Excel file. So I'm going to go ahead and close this dude. Do not save. Now here we have a fresh workbook. So let's go ahead and import that. I'm going to click data from text CSV. Find the files. Okay. Let's go with time series confirmed cases. All right, now what we want to do here, we could just directly load it, but it's not gonna load correctly. You can see that our headers are under the well, these default column headings that they've given us. So click transform data, and we have this pretty cool little feature here. And what you wanna do here is go to the transform tab and look right here where it says province, state, country, region, and you have the column headers. So we're just going to click use first row as headers, and then we solve that problem. Easy peasy. Go back to the Home tab, close and load. It should pop everything in here. And now we have a data connection to that CSV file. So if we change anything in the CSV file, it will be changed here. All we have to do is when we're clicking within the table, go to the Table Design tab and click Refresh, and we're going to get new data. So we can make sure it's always updated. And you can do whatever you want with the data now. That's the best part. And I'm going to show you a real simple but useful way to aggregate this data using a pivot table, or at least to slice and dice it with a pivot table in a moment. But before that, I want to show you another really, really cool way to get this data. So it's nice to download the zip file and have it all on your computer so that you can do whatever you want with it. But then tomorrow you have to go and get more data from there. So that can be a bit of a pain. Here is another really cool way we can do it. So let's go to sheet one. And what we can do is on the data tab, we can actually import it from the web, but we need a URL for that. So let us go back to the GitHub page. We had to go here to download all of the data. We couldn't just download the individual file, but, but we can do a really cool little thing. So go back to time series. And let's choose the file we want, this time the confirmed file. And you can view the file like this. You could copy paste it if you wanted to. It goes very slow. But what we want to do is click this button right here, raw. And you'll notice that when I click this, the screen will change quite a bit, but the URL will also change up here. So we click raw. And now instead of www or whatever in front of GitHub right here, we have a raw dot github etc etc and you can see here we have only the csv data so we go up here we copy the url then we can go back to excel and click from web paste the url in there hit ok and before this screen if it's the first time that you do it, it excel might ask you if you want to log in as a different user, or if you want to do some sort of different options, don't worry about that. Just hit OK. It doesn't matter in this case. So we get to this window, but once again, we do need to remove the default columns that were put above our column headers. So we go to transform data. And the first couple times I did this actually, for some reason, Excel did crash. So I don't know why that happened, but it did. <laughs> Then I did it again and it did not crash. So just be aware of that. Make sure you save all your data before that happens and close everything and do this on a new workbook. But now, once again, we go to transform, use first row as headers, go to home, change anything else you want here, by the way. 
It's a really, really cool feature that I'm not going to cover in this tutorial anymore. Then we go to close and load. And now you see we have two queries and connections over here. And we have the same data, the same stuff as this, except for this one right here comes from our CSV file. And this one right here comes from the web. So I haven't tested it out yet, but when they update the data later today, I should be able to just click refresh and have the new column of data over here populate for March 16th. So that's the two main ways to get the data into Excel. And now that it's in there, let's do just a little bit of slicing and dicing. So I'm going to go and work with this dude, although it doesn't matter which one and click anywhere in the table that was created and go to insert pivot table. Make sure it selected your entire table, which it probably will. It shouldn't have a problem with that. Put it on a new worksheet, hit OK. And there are ways to just directly import the pivot table and you could make it so that you don't have this interim sheet over here and you can do a lot of things, okay? I'm not covering every way you can do this in this tutorial. But now here we are in the pivot table and we can, let's see, I want to click country region first, then all of the countries will pop up. Now let's do province state. So if there are for specific regions within the countries, separate sections of data, those will now be listed there within the country. So that's pretty cool. And what we can do, I'll show you in a moment is collapse it all to make it a nice neat list if we want. So now we have a ton of data here. And what I'm going to do is just select the last day's data. Okay. And now let's see what else do I want to do. One thing that I do like to do is click anywhere in this data here and then go to design and go over here to subtotals. And sometimes it is do not show subtotals. So you'll see these numbers here, it was 297 for Australia, they disappear. So we want to show them. So show all subtotals at the bottom or the top. I like to do it at the top. So here we have the numbers back. And now what we can do, pivot table analyze, is when you're clicking here in the pivot table, click this little red dude right here to collapse field or just right click, right click and go to expand collapse collapse entire field. So that or up here on the ribbon. And now we have a nice neat list of the country's data. So if you want to further analyze one of them, like cruise ship, okay, uh, you can open that up and see we have the diamond princess there. And it's a pretty cool little feature. Now another thing you might want to do is to sort by the number of infected so we can right click over here go to sort and sort largest to smallest now we have a list of countries china italy iran south korea yada 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 this is for the confirmed cases and one final thing i'll show you which is kind of neat is when we're clicking here in the pivot table we can go pivot table analyze and do a pivot chart it would be really cool if we could do the map you know microsoft shows you how cool their map feature is, right? But it doesn't work here, so yay for that, okay. Let's go to column chart, hit okay. And now we have the data on our column chart. I'm gonna go ahead and close pivot chart fields. And now we have a nice little chart. We can make it as big or as small as we want. One thing that you might want to do is to take off some of these countries like China so that the scale is a little bit different. So we could click this button down here and find China, uncheck China, hit OK. And now China is removed and the scale is changed quite a bit. So this can help you to see the number of cases of people that have it. And then of course you have the other two CSV files which will be the cases of people who have died and who have also been cured. But now this is just a very basic tutorial to show you some of the things you can do once you've gotten the data into Excel. You can do so many other things. If you just want data for a specific country, just focus on the data from that specific country. 
if you want to put it into nice beautiful charts, not just this boring kind of chart here on the pivot table, then do that. Once it's in Excel, the sky's the limit and you can slice and dice it however you need to so that it's most helpful for you and your situation. All right, so that's it for this tutorial, guys. I'll put some of the links that we covered in the description for the video. And uh, please, 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 please try and stay healthy and try and stay safe through this.